Hey. Hey, sir. Who is that masked woman? <laughs> No? No. You're right on time. Right on time. Hello, my darling. But, if you, but if you talk to Alice one more minute, you're going to be late. Uh oh. <laughs> and I'm about to start. Right here. Hey, I'm holding. Oh, man. I'm about to start right now. Look like oh. you are weak. Amen. Amen. <laughs> well, we are grateful, thankful. Thank you. And uh, just appreciative uh, that the Lord is on our side. Yeah. Amen. 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 Scripture says that greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. And so God intended for us to be victorious. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And so we are going to trust God for all that we need. We've done it this far. You know, we often say we've come this far by faith. And so it doesn't make sense changing up <laughs> this late in the game, Leon. It doesn't make sense changing up now. As, as the Apostle Paul said, you know, you all started in the spirit. How, how did you end up in the flesh and think you're going to make it in the flesh? You know, go with what you started with when you were successful. Well, the Bible says that the just shall live by faith. And so that's what we're going to do. We're going to keep on living by faith. Faith got us in. Faith has given us access into this grace in which we stand. And we're still standing by faith. And so I'm not trading that in because that's what's worked for me all this time. And so I'm going to believe God. It's a good day today to serve the Lord and to honor him. We are reminded constantly that we need him. Is that right? Uh, Jesus said, without me, you can do nothing. And uh, if we're not convinced of it, if we just keep on living, we'll prove it. <laughs> we'll, we'll prove it that we can't do anything without him. We will fail every time if we decided just to go on our own and do our own thing, we would fail. But I think, I think, I think that uh, all of you already know and understand uh, you have come this far because of him. And that is why we've come together. We've come together to give God glory and honor and praise. He's been good to us far better than we have been to ourselves. And so we're going to give him glory. Uh, we want to welcome those of you that are live streaming with us. It is a joy that uh, to our hearts that you have joined us tonight. And we are trusting that as we uh, share together, as we commune together, as we feel God's blessing upon us together, that we will be overjoyed by what the Lord is doing in our hearts and in this place tonight. And so wherever you are, I pray you'll get your Bible ready. Uh, because we are Bible believing people and we're going to be teaching from the scriptures uh, because we don't have a word uh, that compares. Amen. We don't have a book that compares to the word of God. And so get your Bible ready. Uh, we're going to uh, honor the Lord's word tonight. Amen. Mother, it's so good to see you in the house tonight. We thank God for you. Donald has walked all the way from across town and uh, made it here on time. What time did you leave this morning? <laughs> did, you, did you leave after breakfast this morning and walk all the way over here, Donald? We are glad to see you, Donald, tonight. We praise God for you and we bless his holy name. Well, let's get ready to open in prayer, and I'm going to switch it up. I'm going to have Alice to open this in prayer. Leon is going to pray for our prayer request, and then Michelle's just going to hold his hand. Amen? Praise God. Hey, hey. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. There you go. Oh, Holy and Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you. We lift up holy hands. We praise you. You have brought us from the beginning of this day to right now. We give you all the praise and all the glory. We ask for your Holy Spirit just to fall. We invite you to come in, Heavenly Father. Oh, just sit with us. Teach us. We want to learn more about you, Heavenly Father. Be with each person, Heavenly Father. We just lift everything up 
to you, Heavenly Father. We're so grateful. We love you, Heavenly Father. We thank you for everything that you do for us. We thank you for everything that you're working on in our behalf. We thank you. We praise you. We just say hallelujah to your name, Heavenly Father. We just ask for your Holy Spirit just to come in and sit with us, Heavenly Father. Be with our teacher for this evening, Heavenly Father. Oh, just praise your holy name. We just ask you to <clears throat> we just lift each one of us up, Heavenly Father, in your precious name. Amen and amen. Praise your holy name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. All right, let's get ready to worship. Go right ahead, Benny, and play those songs, and we're going to lift up the name of Jesus. Hallelujah.
Visa card.
praise you. Thank you. Yes, Lord. Thank you. Yes, Lord. Yes. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I trust that that is the desire in all of our hearts that the Spirit of God will have his way in us. Amen? It's one thing I do know about the Holy Spirit. He knows where he's going. We might be guessing at it, but he, he knows where he's going. And so we want him to have his way and direct us in the way that we ought to go. Uh, because he knows the will of our Father. Amen. Those things that are in the heart of God, the Spirit of God is trying to convey to us, and we just want the Lord to have his way. Amen. We want him just to be poured out into our hearts and fill us right up. Amen. Fill us all the way up. Amen. Yeah. So full of the spirit that nothing else can invade our space. Amen. Thank God for his goodness. It's prayer time now. And so if you have a prayer request or whatever that might be, uh, we want to pray for you. Uh, Sister Oliver, I see your hand. You can take your mask off and I think we'll hear you a lot clearer. Okay. 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 Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. For those of you that are joining us via live stream, uh, Mother is asking us to remember a cousin of hers, Barbara Ann. Uh, she is obviously in a state that the family is trying to make a decision uh, to pull the plug on her, take her off of life support systems, either Saturday or Sunday. And so that family needs our prayers. That is, a, that is not an easy decision to make. And I know that some members of the family will struggle on the one side and others on the other. And so let's remember them in prayer and let's remember uh, that that they, these people uh, sometimes go through these things and in going through them, they realize just how much they need God. And so let's remember their spiritual condition as well, that the Lord will meet them where they are. Amen. Any other requests? If I don't see any hands, let's remember uh, the family of Sister Ollie Tucker. Uh, many of you remember Ollie. Ollie passed yesterday. And um, her son called uh, Pastor Leon and I, and uh, we talked with him. And uh, he informed us that she had a number of complications, and she passed yesterday. And so they're trying to make funeral arrangements. Uh, they are going to need some assistance and help with funeral costs. Um, Sister Ollie did not have uh, any kind of insurance, and so uh, the family is left to try to uh, get the funds to be able to bury her. And so let's remember that family in prayer. All right? Uh, any others? Any other requests? Let's remember uh, Pastor Fred Phillips. Uh, Pastor Leon and I know Pastor Phillips very well. Uh, he is a pastor up in the Bay Area, I think, closer to Sacramento, I think. Uh, and so he has uh, been diagnosed with having pancreatic cancer, and um, he's already receiving treatments. Let's remember him in a special way. This is a, a just a good, solid brother in the Lord, uh, loving pastor, good husband, and just a wonderful person. We first time I met him, I, I, his spirit and my spirit linked. Uh, he is vibrant, full of joy, full of faith, and uh, just just wants to move forward in Jesus. And uh, he is battling through this, and let's, let's hold him up in prayer. Amen? Let's hold him up in prayer. Amen. Any other requests, Pastor Leon? Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> continue to remember DJ. Amen. Uh, the first funeral that he had, uh, the first stem cell treatment took well. Praise God. Uh, the second session is not doing as well uh, but he did get the box Ooh, yeah. amen 
Praise God. Praise God. Wonderful. Wonderful. <clears throat> Praise God. Praise God. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Hey. He said his cousin, the box fooled me. He said that box was deceiving because it, it was a small box. It didn't seem like that heavy, but it was packed. <laughs> packed with goodies. <laughs> Amen. She tried to pick it up and, and had a problem. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. Amen. Amen. Wonderful. Wonderful. All right, for those of you that are joining us via live stream, if you did not hear that praise report or request, Pastor Leon is asking us to continue to remember DJ. We've been praying for him for some time now, and uh, he did very well on the first stem cell um, process, procedure, or whatever. Second one has not gone nearly as well as the first, but we're still trusting God to bring him through that. Uh, Sister Alice and Clarence had put some things together in a package to send him just to let him know that we care about him and we're thinking of him. And the family was just incredibly blessed to receive it and their hearts were touched. And we are just so grateful and thankful uh, to all of the hard work that our people are doing to be a blessing. Amen. The Bible says that Jesus went about doing good. And I think that if we continue to do good and serve and help people, uh, our church will be blessed indeed. Amen. Let's continue to serve the Lord in that way. And let's continue to hold up little DJ. And let's believe God to bless him in his body and bring him through this uh, with flying colors that we might rejoice in the Lord. All right. Any last prayer requests? Remember, again, those of you that are joining us via live stream, you can send us a message. We will get that message with your request and we will hold that up in prayer and trust God with you. And so we want you to participate as well. Amen. Amen. Yes. Let's remember Bruce uh, and the Lockett family. Uh, Bruce is still uh, somewhere in Georgia. Uh, somewhere somewhere in the trees in Georgia, Leon told me he's going to be there for about three months. And so let's remember, let's continue to remember Bruce. He's still grieving. Heart is still heavy. Some of those memories flood him at times and overwhelm him. And um, he told me he's just, you know, sometimes he just breaks down. Well, that's what grief does to people. And we're going to continue to hold him up and trust God with him. As a matter of fact, Bruce told me he listens to the, to the live stream. And so uh, he may be listening tonight. And Bruce, if you're listening, we're, we're holding you up in prayer, brother. And we're believing God with you uh, all the way across the country in Georgia. You are on our minds. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Well, let's get ready to pray. Uh, Pastor Leon has already been assigned. And Michelle looks like she's trying to grab his hand and uh, give him some support. So let's let's stand together and let's believe God. Praise God. Praise Praise Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, we bow our hearts in your presence, Lord God, first of all in worship, simply because of who you are. You're a great king. You're a loving father. You're one that sticks closer than a brother. You're the friend, Lord God, every one of us need. And we're just so thankful to be in your presence, to be called the children of God. And so we come to you, Lord God, in confidence. We come to you, Lord God, because we know in you there's favor. We come to you, Lord God, because we know you cannot fail. You've never lost a battle. Hallelujah. And so we come into your presence, Lord God, confident that you hear us. And your word says, Lord, uh, that if we know that you hear us, 
we can have the very things we're petitioning you for. We pray, Lord God, that every prayer be according to your will. Because everything according to your will, oh Lord, you will see through. You will accomplish. You will cause it to come to pass. And so, Father, in the name of Jesus, we continue to lift DJ up and pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, for you to touch that young body. Thank you for giving him joy in the midst of what he's going through. We're asking you, Lord God, to bless that little body, and we're just believing for a complete healing in Jesus' name. Continue to remember his aunt and cousin, Lord God, who is right there by his side, to bless them and strengthen them, Lord God, as they have to suffer through with DJ and all that he's going through, we lift them up and give them into your hands. Hallelujah. We lift up Bruce and those that are grieving. We lift up Joseph Tucker who has just lost his mom and we just pray, Father, in the name of Jesus for you to just strengthen his heart. Remember, Lord God, his trust is, help him to remember, I should say, his trust is in you. Hallelujah. You have what he needs for comfort. You have what he needs to take care of his mother's situation. You have what he needs, Lord God, to go forward, hallelujah, and not lose heart. And so we're just giving him into your hands and trusting you, Lord God, to comfort him in a very special way. Remember Barbara Ann, Lord God, and the family, hallelujah. What is so amazing, Lord God, that I believe sometimes we forget that, Lord God, even Even now, you're able to raise Barbara Ann. Hallelujah. So we give her into your hands. We give the family into your hands. We're asking you to move by your spirit and just work on hearts, Lord God, that need conditioning. Hearts, Lord God, that need cultivating. Hearts, Lord God, that need to be led to to your son. You said no one comes to the Father except the Spirit draws them. So Holy Spirit, move like you need to move to draw those hallelujah to Jesus that they might be saved. We lift them up before you and we give them into your hands. Lord, remember my brother Lorenzo who is struggling right now, Lord God. We give him into your hands. We pray that you would just Move by your spirit, Lord God, to strip him of the pride that holds him, hallelujah, to stripping of the confidence that he has in himself, Lord God, that he might be vulnerable to you, Holy Spirit, and allow you to move on his heart that he might truly come to know Jesus as his Savior, oh God. We give him into your hands as we lift up all our un save loved ones. We're trusting you, Lord God, to see them save tear and we're trusting you to see them save when we get to glory. We're just believing, hallelujah, that you're going to move by your spirit in saving our households, oh God, in Jesus' name. We continue to lift up Shante and we just thank you that she's encouraged. We thank you, Lord God. She's soliciting prayer. She's believing in prayer right now, Lord God. And so I'm just trusting her to believe in you. Move in a very special way, Lord God, as you touch her, as you minister to her, as you draw her unto yourself. I just give her into your hands. Remember Fred Phillips in a very special way, oh God. What a joyful, wonderful man of God. We lift him up before you and we just pray in the name of Jesus for his healing to be swift, for his healing to be whole, for his wife to be strengthened, for his family to be blessed, for his church to continue, Lord God, to trust in
in you, Lord God, for all that they need. We just give them into your hands, oh God, and we trust them to your care. Hallelujah. And so we thank you, Lord God, always for the times we have to come before you, to commune with you, to praise you and to magnify your name, to lift up petitions and intercede for others. We thank you in the name of Jesus for what you're doing and what you're going to do to show yourself strong, to lift our faith, oh God, to bless our souls, to show favor to your people we just give it all into your hands and say thank you oh God and have your way in Jesus name amen and amen hallelujah Praise his awesome name. It's called You Waited. Hallelujah. You came out of your way. You sat down to speak to me. What amazing grace. So patiently, and you waited for me, just for me. My shame 
Ah, yes. Where would we be? Come on now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Might not want to go there, huh? Don't even want to think about that for a moment. Yeah. Lord, help us. We need so much help all the time. And God is always there for us. I'm glad he said he'll never leave us nor forsake us. Sometimes life gets rough. Sometimes the storm clouds blow. And uh, sometimes they blow for a long time. I was reminded um, from Sunday's message, uh, something that I think we have to uh, consider. There are times in the Christian life where it seems as if Jesus stands on the bow of our ship and says to the storm, peace, be still. And the wind and the waves, that they just sort of just calm down. But Donald, there are some times when he lets the storm rage. And watch this, and nobody looks like they're standing on the bow. And, you know, God allowed the Apostle Paul and those on the ship to go through one of those kinds of storms. Um, the Bible says, when neither sun nor stars appeared in many days. Amen? Come on now. And, and, no, and no small tempest lay upon us. All hope was then gone that we should be saved. Come on, the storm just kept raging. Nobody was standing on the bow of the ship and saying, peace be still. Sometimes you go through storms and they last a while. Amen. Now, now, now listen to me carefully. I don't know anybody other than Jesus who could have been on that boat that had the kind of faith that Paul had. So watch this. It wasn't a lack of faith that the storm was not stilled. That's right. Come on now. Paul had more faith than all of us probably put together. <laughs> but he, he, he no doubt was praying that that, that storm would stop. Right. Come on now. And it didn't. Tells me sometimes God's going to allow you to go through some things. Come on now. He's going to let you go through some things. Come on now. <laughs> because... I, you know, this is not even my message tonight, Leon. I'm just sharing something that's on my heart. Watch this now. And we're going to get to this on Sunday. Sometimes the storm that you are in is actually happening for the purpose that you don't know why. That's right. That's right. Amen. That's right. To get you to a place that you don't know where. To do a work that you weren't even expecting to do. When you look at that passage, I'm convinced now that when Paul left Caesarea and got on that boat and then went up a little further up towards Cilicia and got on another boat to take him to Italy, God already had in mind, watch this, that he'll land on Malta or on Melita. Because this is, watch this now, because God has some people on this little island that he wants to save. <laughs> you know, sometimes when you're going through your storm and you're complaining and fussing and wondering why God's taking so long, he is working in you, on you, and through you to get you to a place that you can be effective when you get there to do what he wants you to do. Amen. Come on now. I got a feeling that, that Paul prayed for Timothy's stomach, Leon. I'm sure he did. Number of times. I'm sure he did. Timothy, unlike a whole lot of other people that Paul healed, was not healed. So Paul, after all this time of Timothy dealing with this stomach issue, Paul told him, take a little wine for your frequent infirmity. <laughs> don't, don't drink the water anymore. The water's probably adding to your problem. They didn't have purified water back then, Leon. The water was probably helping the issue and the problem. When I say helping, making it worse, he told him, don't drink the water any longer. Take a little wine for your frequent infirmity. 
he was still sick. He was still dealing with stomach issues. And like I said before, I don't know anybody other than Jesus that had as much faith as Paul. Sometimes you just have to go through what you're going through because God has a purpose for it. Amen. I, I think when people are afflicted, I think we ought to pray. Amen. Amen. And we ought to keep on praying. Amen. If they ain't getting healed, there's only two things that I know is the problem. One, we don't have enough faith. And two, God ain't intending to heal them. Amen. And we see both in the scriptures. Come on, somebody. Are you with me? Amen. I knew I had some Bible believing people in here tonight. Yeah. Yeah. Because we talk so positive that like God's going to heal everyone. Yes. He's not. He's not. So what do you do when God says no? What yeah. What do you do when God says wait? Yeah. You respond like Job, I would imagine, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. <laughs> I'm going to trust God. I'm going to trust God no matter what people do, no matter what the devil does, no matter what the world decides to do, I'm going to trust God. And I'm going to hold on to his hand through thick and thin. Amen. 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 Yeah, you know, sometimes you have something before the Lord and it's now it's, in, it's the third year that you've been praying. And you wonder why God's not answering. God sovereignly knows what he's doing. Like I said before, oftentimes we're guessing at this thing. God knows what he's doing. And uh, when, you, when you get to that place where you uh, sort of come into what God already knows, <laughs> then you're, here you are with your happy self because now you understand why God did what he did. Absolutely. Let's keep on trusting him and let's keep on believing him. Hey, tonight I want to I wanna just take a look at, uh, hopefully I won't be long with you, uh, John chapter 17 is the high priestly prayer of Jesus. And uh, as you're turning there, scrolling there, um, electronically uh, feeling your way there, um, I want to ask a question, and I want to try to answer that, probably not in the traditional way that we might, or think about it in the traditional way that we might. But I want to ask the question, uh, we're in John chapter 17, the whole chapter is Jesus' prayer, and uh, we're going to look at that in just a moment. But I want to ask a question first, and I want you to put your thinking caps on, okay? Okay. And the question may seem like a simple question with a simple answer, uh, but I'm going to approach it in a slightly different way tonight. This is the question, Mother. Why do we pray? Why do we pray? The reason why I'm asking this question is because while prayer is the thing that is so necessary in, in the body of Christ, it is probably the hardest discipline to maintain. And I'm beginning to ask the question, why? And is the why or the answer to the why a part of why maybe we don't pray as much as we should? Okay? So I want you to think about that for a moment. Why, why do we pray? And you could throw out some, some answers uh, after, you, after you think for a moment. Uh, you can throw out some answers. I don't want you to spit out answers real quickly. I want you to sit with it for a moment. Why do we pray? And there are a lot of answers to this, even from the scriptures um, that we could give. I'm, I'm going to approach it a little differently tonight. And we're going to take a look at some things in the prayer of Jesus in relationship to why. And I think it will give us an appreciation, a, a greater appreciation for prayer and the need to pray. Okay? So if you have a, if you have a thought, you can throw it out um, and I'll catch it. <laughs> throw, throw it and I'll catch it. Donna, why do we pray? Because as believers, we're supposed to pray. We're supposed to pray. Um, why? Why? Well, Okay, okay, we pray because we are communicating with God. Why, why do we pray? Latanya, why do we pray? I think 
Wonderful. Yes. Yes. That we're commanded to do. Yeah. So scripture tells us that we ought to pray. Jesus said in Luke chapter 18, verse 1, the Bible says that he spoke a prayer after this manner, that men ought always to pray and not to faint. Okay. Why, why else? Why else? Shell? Keeps us vulnerable. And, and humble. Okay. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. There, there is. There is just so much related to to prayer that I don't know if we think long enough and wide enough about why we pray that would give us an added incentive to pray if we really understood why. And some of the things that we're, we're throwing out right now, oftentimes we don't think about it, we just pray. We don't think about why we pray, we just pray. And oftentimes, uh, the average person quote unquote believer prays simply to get stuff from God. And that's basically why a lot of believers pray. Well, let me put it in quotes again. Believers pray. Uh, but what I want to do tonight is I want to take a look at why we pray um, in a different light. Okay, in a different light. And I, I hope uh, that you won't just pray because you're told to do so you'll have a ton of other reasons why you pray, okay? Because what I found out is, is that a lot of times we don't do what we're told. <laughs> we, we just don't. We don't do what we're told. We struggle with obedience. And so uh, is there, are there other reasons why we ought to be praying uh, that will help us together with the command to pray, to pray, okay? I want, to, I want to take a look at this passage of Scripture in John chapter 17. We have the, the number one role model praying. That's Jesus. Number one role model that's praying. Uh, as you know, and I shared this on uh, Mother's Day, uh, that Jesus rose uh, hours before the sun came up, went apart from his disciples, alone to pray, met with the Father. Um, what, what was the major motivator, you think, to get him to go and pray early in the morning? I want, you, I want you to put your thinking cap on again. What was the major motivation? Okay, Benny, I see your hand. Okay. Okay, all right. Okay, yeah. This would have been uh, his regular pattern uh, because obviously it was the only time he could pray. The rest of the day, you know, he's inundated with people. Uh, people are thronging him everywhere he went. Jesus was well known. He was a celebrity. Yes. Not because he thought he was a celebrity. <laughs> Some people are celebrities because they think they're celebrities. He's a celebrity because the people made him a celebrity. As a matter of fact, he was such a celebrity that they wanted to make him king. That's how, how popular he had become. But I want you to see this, and I think this is important. We could give a lot of reasons, a million reasons why Jesus would get up early in the morning and go and pray to the Father. Give a lot of reasons. You know what I think Leon is the major motivation? He loved God more than anything and delighted in coming to meet with him. This, this is powerful. Prayer says, your personal prayer life says a lot about how much you love God. 
that that you would take that kind of um, or make that kind of decision hours before it got light, get away from everything and everybody to meet up with God. Wow. So prayer becomes much more than a demand. Prayer becomes an act of love, an act of appreciation, an act of just wanting to be affectionately in the presence of the one you love. You know what, it's the only thing that I could think of uh, that is somewhat similar in this life is, is how you felt when you first fell in love. You would sacrifice time with the one you loved, cut off everybody else, and go. <laughs> we were talking about that before service started. And Clarence said, hey, yeah, I'm, I'm coming over there. Like he was in a different house talking to his girlfriend and he was going to come over that night. Um, when you were first in love, you, you made sacrifices to be with the person that you loved. Watch this. And the, the major motivation was not because somebody told you to come. Your major motivation was not that somebody made you come over your girlfriend's house. Your major motivation was love. You, you love, man, listen. If Clarence, if it was snowing, you'd go. If it was raining, you would go. If you had another appointment somewhere, you'd want to cancel it and go. Because that's the one you wanted to be with. So, so my, my, I'm starting to just rethink why I pray. Am I praying just to get stuff from God? Or am I praying just because it's my duty to pray? Or am I coming into the presence of God because he is my first love? And I want to I wanna spend time with him. And I think, I think that ought to be our first motivation because that was Jesus' first motiv motivation. It wasn't just something that we think was his motivation. He loved the Father more than anybody. I mean, he, he went to death. He, he came down to, to go to death to sacrifice his own life because he loved the father so much that, that he would do whatever the father would tell him to do. He did it because of love. Now listen to this. Uh, in verse 1, these words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify your son that your son also may glorify you. Now he uses that affectionate term, a uh, father. It's a, ter a term of endearment. A term of relational love for the father. Okay? So, so the reason he's out early in the morning coming to pray to the Father is because of their love connection. Their love connection. I, I want to be, I want to be uh, the kind of person that loves God in the way that, that you just passionately desire to be with him and not with others. Come on, I know you can't spend all day with God. You got to go to work. Uh, you got to spend time with your own family. Uh, but, but there ought to be time that you come into his presence simply because you love him. You have a certain affection for him. And there's a certain endearment in relationship to him. That, that's, that's, I think, Jesus' chief motivation is that he came to prayer because he wanted to be in the presence of the Father because he loved him. Amen. And, and as I begin to think about, because uh, I'm, I'm convinced of this, that a ministry that uh, suffers in the area of prayerlessness is a ministry that will eventually die. I think we've denigrated or um, sort of belittled uh, prayer down to uh, the least important thing in the church and its ministry when it's really one of the most important. 
And like I said, if, if you fail to pray, you will fail to stay. <laughs> Amen. The ministry will have no staying power without prayer power. Okay? Because this is our love connection with the Father. Amen. Amen. And with the Son and with the Holy Spirit. So he uses this term of endearment, term of affection and love, Father. The hour has come, glorify your Son that your son also may glorify you. Wow. This is an awesome, awesome connection of love. I want you to write down some words, and I'm going to go through each one of them. I won't be long on each one of them, but let's just write down these words. Because these are the words that we ought to be thinking about as we, as we think about coming into the presence of the Father, coming to prayer. We want to think about these words. So first of all, these three words that I just mentioned, love, affection, and endearment, I'll write them down. After you write those words down, uh, the next word I want you to write down is devotion. He is totally devoted to God and God's purpose. Totally devoted. So devotion. The next word I want you to write is dependence. Jesus was totally dependent upon the Father for everything. Everything. Remember what I told you, the words that he spoke, he said, they're not my words, but the words of him that sent me. He is the one speaking to me and telling me what to say. And he is, he is doing works and showing me what to do. He is totally dependent upon the Father. Amen. Then the word submission. He is totally submitted to what God wants and what God has purposed. He does not have, Clarence, he does not have his own agenda. That's right. you, you can't be one where each person has their own agenda. That's right. That's so, so the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are not up in heaven arguing about what they're going to do. That's right. That's right. They're on one accord. They have one mind, one purpose, and they have one goal, and they all agree to it. Amen. Come on, somebody. So, so there has to be a, even if you have an inkling that you want to do something different, you have to submit. Because you understand that the Father's will is far greater than what you could ever imagine. And so if anybody's, watch this, if anybody's going to give in, it ain't going to be him. He's not gonna, God's not going to say, you know. That was a brilliant idea, and I did not think of that, so I'm going to submit to you, and we're going to do what you just said. Now, he doesn't do that. He's got this thing all thought out way before you even came on the scene. It's already figured out. The book has already written. The final chapter has already been written. God's not changing the book. It's already a done deal. Now he's just trying to get us on board so that we can flow with what he's doing. All right. So I said love, affection, endearment, devotion, dependence, submission, and the next word is communion. Communion. All right, communion. We, we want to pray because we want to commune with God. Come on, somebody. We, we want to we wanna be together with him and enjoy fellowship with him. Amen. And then the, the last one that I have tonight is, is commission slash calling. Commission slash calling. Okay. Let me go through these. I'm going to try to run through them as quickly as I can. And we should be out in about 15 to 20 minutes at the most. Okay. So we've talked about love. We've talked about affection. Talked about endearment. We pray because we are devoted to God and to his will and his purposes. Okay? Prayerlessness is devotion to our purposes and our will. It is an acknowledgement that we don't need God and we could work this out ourselves. 
So that's why I said a church that does not pray does not involve God in it and they expect it to work. Because, Alice, they are not completely devoted to God and God's purposes and God's ways. When we are totally devoted to him and his purposes and his ways, we will come to him because we need to know his purposes and his ways. And so we come to him out of love. We come to him out of devotion because we need to know what God desires where he's wanting to take us, how he's wanting us to operate. Jesus was so totally devoted to the Father, he didn't consult anybody else but him. That's right. Amen. Amen. He's coming to the Lord early in the morning. And, and this is almost what it's like, Alice. He's coming to the Lord early in the morning, still dark. He's praying to the Father. And it's almost like he's saying, I, I'm not going to make it unless you tell me what to do. I'm not going to have the success that you desire for me to have unless you show me what to do. You're talking about devotion. This is his devotion to God that brings him to prayer. He's coming from love. He's coming from devotion. And then thirdly, he's coming from a place of dependence. Yes, 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 yes. Amen. You know, you can be saved a long time and not be totally dependent. That's true. I'm talking about on God. Because oftentimes we make quick decisions and then hope God blesses it. <laughs> we haven't really consulted him. And then, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to put up my hand first. Eyes, eyes guilty. Sometimes we make decisions and then, and then somehow hope that God's okay with it and he's going to bless it. That's not how Jesus operated. Jesus went to the Father in prayer because he was dependent upon the Father for everything. God was speaking to him constantly, showing him things constantly, and he was so dependent upon the Father, knowing that whatever the Father decided, it was going to work. <laughs> because the Father's not guessing at stuff. Remember now, Jesus came, and this is important, and I shared this, I remember when I was up in Las Vegas, and I was sharing at a church, uh, Pastor Connedy's church, and uh, some of the pastors, there were about three pastors together, and they came and thanked me afterwards uh, for something that I said, and this is what I said, that Jesus Christ, like us, was dependent upon the Holy Spirit to direct him. In a number of ways. He was not doing his own thing. He was empowered by the Holy Spirit. Remember now, when he was baptized in Matthew chapter 4 by John the Baptist, the Spirit of God descended from heaven like a dove and rested on him. Remember that? Jesus said himself, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel. And he goes on down the line with the things that he says. And then the spirit of God drove him out into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. When he came back, he came back in the power of the spirit. When he spoke to the Pharisees, he said, if I, by the spirit of God, cast out demons, then the kingdom of God has come among you. He's saying that what I'm doing, I am doing by the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God had rested upon him, was moving in him and empowering him and gifting him and anointing him to do what he was doing. He was totally dependent. The problem often in the church is that we relish independence. <laughs> Watch this, Leon. It's the American way. We have been we have been so saturated with the idea of independence. Come on now. <laughs> I, I, I shouldn't say this, but I am. That's why marriages are in trouble. 
rather than working together and submitting and trying to, you know, work things out and move forward, we're competing with one another. Because there's no dependence because we're taught independence. You know, you're not a, you're not a 21st century woman unless you're independent. Can I ask you a question, you women? You want to stay married? <laughs> Keep on being independent and you'll be all by yourself somewhere in a corner. With a frown on your face, God has called you to work in a relationship with your spouse and understand that you are dependent on each other. Come on. Me and I am dependent on my wife for so many things. And she would testify too many things. <laughs> and she depends on me for at least one or two things, Leon. We are dependent on each other. Amen. And we understand that if we are going to move forward, it's going to have to be together. We cannot fight with one another and compete with one another and move forward. Amen. Amen. Except two people are agreed. They cannot walk together. That's right. One, you know, fussing, kicking, fighting, dragging the person this way and that way. You can't, you can't function well if you are not in agreement. We have to understand what dependence is. Dependence is not a dirty word. We've made it a dirty word. Feminists have made it a dirty word. But dependence is what Jesus was about because he depended on God and the Holy Spirit to guide him every step of the way. So when he comes to God in prayer, he's coming with an understanding that he is totally dependent on him and he needs to be with him and in his presence. Yes. Amen. Wow. Yes. Le yeah, Leon was going to share some. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. Um, I was just thinking that that's... It's probably what, what I'm sensing is just a lack of maturity because I believe, well, it's been it's experiential with me. The more I grow and understand and mature in Christ, the more I know I need dependence on God. And the more these other things fall away, you know, you mentioned people uh, praying for themselves for stuff. I don't know the last time I prayed for something for me. Absolutely. Honestly. Absolutely. You follow what I'm saying? I have literally everything I need. I really don't need nothing else. Amen. You, you, you follow what I'm I don't, you know. Uh, Exactly. I do. I absolutely. When my birthday came and the kids like, what do you want? I, I don't need anything. I want you all around me because I don't need anything. And I believe as you grow and begin to mature, God has a way of causing these things to fall off. And you understand clearer and clearer your dependence on him. Yeah. One of the things that I realize is that when you don't get this right, this idea of dependence, he'll help you. He'll help you to understand how much you need him. Because he'll, he'll let you fail in yourself. With your self stuff, he'll let it fail so you'll know how dependent you need to be on him. He does this. Amen. He does this. He did that with Peter. Remember? Peter said, Listen, the old man forsake you. Peter, Peter standing up, you know, yeah, these guys are not like me. That's what that's what Peter's really saying. I, I'm 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 far better than these other people you talking about going to flee tonight. If you have to go to prison or death, I got your back. And Jesus turned to him and said, You know, the cro the, the cock is not even going to crow twice before you deny me three times. And Peter said, well, well, hold up. No, no, that ain't me. So Jesus just let him go. He wasn't going to stand there and argue with him. Jesus knew that what he said was right and what Peter was saying was wrong. But now Peter had to live it to get it. That's right. 
Come on now. And that's what God does with us sometimes. When, when we, you know, even though we might not say it out of our mouths, but we're thinking it in our heads. No, we're going we to do it. And God said, no, you're not. You, you, here you are telling me something I already know you're not going to do. So I'm just going to let you go ahead, believing you're going to be who you think you're going to be. You're going to get let down, and then you're going to come back to me with your humble heart now and say, Lord, I should have listened to you in the first place. He teaches us hard lessons sometimes. And in our journey, we have to learn these lessons because dependence is something so powerful in the kingdom that you cannot miss the lesson. You got to get it. You can't go forward without the lesson of dependence. And so when we see in this prayer, we're seeing Jesus speaking to the Father and sharing things with the Father because he is so dependent on the Father for what he needs. Amen. And uh, the next word is submission. Uh, I, already, I already said it, submission. So write down those words. We began first with love, affection, uh, slash endearment. We talked about devotion. We're talking about dependence. And now we're talking about submission. Okay? Obviously, the chief uh, passage of scripture in relationship to submission is Jesus in the garden asking God to let the cup pass from him. Uh, I can understand that. As a matter of fact, um, Jesus was praying, the Bible says, and um, the sweat was dropping down like great drops of blood. I think had we been praying, it would have been blood. Uh, we would have been praying so hard for that cup to pass from us. It's understandable because there's so much pain and so much anguish uh, in that cup. So, 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 I mean, it's brutality in that cup. And uh, Jesus is asking the Lord to remove it, to take it away. Here, here comes submission. Nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. Father, I'm going with your program. Whatever you decide, I'm going to submit to it, even though as a man in flesh, I want to go a different way because I, I really don't want to go through all of that stuff. But, but if, if you can do it a different way, take this cup from me. But if, if you've already decided that this is what you have to do, then I'm going to go with your program. Man. Yeah, yeah, submission, submission. So, so when we come to God in prayer, we're asking why we pray. We are praying because we want to know what God's will is so that we could submit to it. So that we could live it out. So that God can powerfully move in us because our hearts are in the right place. It's in a place of submission. God, we delight as Jesus. I delight. He, th this is what the word of God says. Lo, I come in the volume of the book to do your will. Wow. That's submission. That's saying, God, I'm, I'm convinced that you are right. And if I have even an inkling that's different from what you've said, I want to submit to what you want. That's what, that's what he's saying. That's when he's coming to prayer, all of these things are a part of who he is. That's why he comes to pray, because God is all of that for him. And he understands why he's coming to prayer. Wow. I, I'm not going to have time to go through uh, this text tonight, but I, I want you to read that, that prayer again, and I want you to hear these things in Jesus as he prays. You, you hear what I'm saying? I want you to see these things because it will give you an appreciation for why we pray. Not just that we pray, it's why we pray. You know, I'd just like to say a couple of words on submission because that's what I'm seeing in today is just a real big problem with people submitting to the will of God because people's ambitions in many ways won't allow them to submit. What it'll cause them to do is to say God is blessing what they're doing. You know, they'll put on God what they're doing 
and, and God's behind it. Uh, but if you watch and listen, you'll see where God is not behind it a lot of times because like you said, God will let it fall to the ground, which lets you know it's he's not behind it. And we can push for what we want. And we do that hard in the church. We push for our ambitions and for what we want. When the scripture says, you know, don't say next week or next year, I'm going to go here, you do that, make a lot of money or whatever, but if the Lord's will. And so I've come to learn and practice as much as possible at when prayer, Lord, your will be done. What is it? Uh, you know, and whatever that is, I submit to that. And whatever you want to do, I'll accept, this is it, I'll accept that because you're saying it's the best thing for me. Praise God. Praise God. Yeah. Praise God. Yeah, go right ahead, Latanya. You want to speak into the mic so those people could hear you? (laughs) All right, I'll try to repeat it then as best I can. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Praise God. Because it's nine. Because it's nine at night. <laughs> After a long work day. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. 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 Stick stick with the discipline and it will bless you and reward you greatly. Um, Remember again, uh, you have to find a time that is an undisrupted time. That time may be different for, for some people. Some people go to work early in the morning and then they come home and go to sleep and then when they wake up, that's their best time. That's fine. As long as it's an uninterrupted time where you're not distracted, pulled all over the place, I just find that once the day starts for me, uh, once I have to get my disabled son up, get him ready, Teresa's now downstairs and she's doing what she does, uh, it's just it's too much going on for me to concentrate. And, uh, you know, I, my house is not large enough to have a, a nice study in it. Uh, if you want to come to my house and build one on the back of my house, I'll, I'll invite you to do so. But I don't have a study, so I have to do it at my dining room table. And so the kitchen area is is the area that most of the happenings happen in the morning. So I got to get my happening happening before the happening happens. You got it? And so uh, it's important for us to really, when we come to God, remember, we are coming to ascertain God's will. Now, nothing takes precedence over that. Amen. Now, you know, Lord, I, I'm, I've been thinking. <laughs> Stop thinking. And ask God what he wants for today. Amen. And submit to it. And your day will go a lot better because it's already planned out. God's already got some things in motion. He just wants you to get on board and follow the program. So submission is important. And that's one of the things why Jesus came to prayer and met with God because he needed to ascertain the will of God and then be willing to submit to it. Come on, somebody. He wanted to submit to what God had on the agenda that day. The next one is communion. Um, the, the communion idea is the idea of just being together and deriving from the one you're with uh, the awesome benefits of being with them. Uh, communion, communion in this prayer is communion with God and communion with believers. Because that's what Jesus is praying for, that we would be one or that we could come together and commune together and not be fighting all the time. 
Sometimes there's more fighting in the church than in the neighborhood, Leon, depending on which neighborhood you live in. Um, people fighting all the time, bickering all the time about stupid stuff. Ain't talking to the person because they disagreed with me about what color the pews ought to be. Both of you ought to leave. Come on. Arguing over that stupid stuff. So Jesus, Jesus, when he came to pray, he came to pray because he wanted just to commune with the Father and be with him and in his presence. And that is awesome. I just want to be with you. <laughs> That's awesome, isn't it? I'm coming to pray, not because I want something. I'm coming to pray just because it's a great thing to be with you. Like I said earlier, you know, when your time is up, you're wondering why you're leaving. In the presence of the Lord is fullness of joy at his right hand, pleasures forevermore. Why would you want to leave? Well, God, I got to go to work. <laughs> But I want you to understand that there are so many other things that are important to keep in mind as you come to pray. Because if you just have duty in mind that Jesus told you you got to do it now, it's your duty to pray. After a while, you're not going to have the motivation to pray. You, you'll stop praying easy. Remember I told you it's the hardest discipline to maintain. And, and, and those of you that have been praying for years, you know. Uh, you, you started off praying this time of the day and then that time of the day and then you skip days and then sometimes you skip weeks. Hard is discipline to maintain, but probably one of the most fruitful. I don't know um, with with reading the word and praying and sharing with other people, not just sharing the gospel, but serving them are the three greatest things that I think that we could do. I don't think anything tops those three things. They are absolutely awesome. Well, I got to throw in worship. Worship, obviously, is vitally important. So four, four things. If I keep on thinking, I'm going to come up with five and then six. But, but those things are so important for us that we have to give time and attention to them. Latanya? And worship. Yeah, coming together as a body of believers, as well as worshiping individually. When you're at home, just, just having a heart of worship, uh, just, just honoring God in worship. I, I, I just got worship all in my bones. If you all weren't here, I'd be doing the same thing I do every time I come in. I just, I just got worship in me. I don't even care about who's in the place. I just want to worship God. Okay, so, so communion. I'm, I'm coming to God to pray because I just, I just want to be with him. Hmm. Remember I told you, you know, when you, when you first fell in love, and some of you know what I'm talking about because you've been in love. It wasn't so much, there were times, there were times when you just wanted to just be with the person and it did not matter. Watch this, what you did. See, see, I could, Latanya, I could sit at the table uh, with my wife in her little apartment at the school and sit down and, and just not say anything. Just with those dreamy eyes. <laughs> we were just so enamored with each other that it did not matter what we did together. We just wanted to be together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's and that's, that's what we ought to bring to our prayer life is God, if, if I could come and just kneel before you or if my knees are just gone and they're shot and I have to sit before you, because <laughs> some of us are at that age now, kneeling is hard now. Uh, we got to sit or lay down. <laughs> If, 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 if I could just come and be in your presence and not say anything, it would be worth it. That's it. That's it. That's just it. communing. Communing is not necessarily talking. Right. Communing is just being together. Absolutely. Absolutely. Man, yeah. I could just be with my wife and not say a thing and just got a smile on my face. I'm just as happy and as content because I'm in her presence. 
Mama, you listening? Am I getting any brownie points? <laughs> yeah, communion. And then lastly, 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 um, we're, we're coming to prayer. Why, we're asking the question, why do we pray? We pray because we have a calling and a commission that is so vital and so much is at stake yes, that I got to know how to tackle this. Watch this now. Mm -hmm. In all of these things that I've just said, because I went through the text and I put all of the verses beside all of these things, you know which one has the most verses next to it, Leon? Uh, what, with what Jesus is praying? is ministry. Amen. It's ministry. He's praying about ministry. God. Nowhere in the prayer is he asking for new shoes, Amen. not a nice house with a picket fence. He's not asking for a, a Rolls Royce. He's praying about ministry. His focus is ministry. So he's coming into the presence of the Father because he wants to know, as I said, what's on the docket for today concerning ministry. Wow. Wow. That, that's why we pray. It can't be just duty. I pray because Jesus told me to pray. Well, that's great. He did. But if that's your only reason why you're praying after a while, remember now, and, and this is what you got to understand. The reason why praying is, is one of the hardest disciplines to maintain, Latanya, is because oftentimes there are no immediate results. If we got immediate results all the time, we'd be praying all the time. But sometimes we're praying and we ain't getting no results for a while. So after a while, we're thinking, well, I'm not sure if I want to keep praying that prayer. And then after a while, we're not praying. We have to be committed to trusting God that he heard what we asked him and he's going to do it if it's in keeping with his will. We know it's going to happen because he said it would. This is the confidence, John says in 1 John, that we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will, we know that he hears us. And if we know that he hears us whatsoever we have desired, he will provide that which we are asking for because it's in keeping with his will. We have to believe him. But what is our prayer directed at? Why are we coming to pray? For stuff? Like Leon said, we don't need more stuff. Mm -hmm. no, we don't. No, we don't. Yeah, I was just going to say, if there's anybody in here that needs some stuff, come see me. <laughs> I will unload on you. Amen. <laughs> I got stuff in my house. People keep giving me stuff. <laughs> let, me, let me say this. I love you all. Love all y'all out there that's listening. My house is only so big. It can't hold all the stuff anymore, and I don't want to throw your stuff away. <laughs> so, so, Latanya, let me ask you, you're new, so they won't beat up on you. Is, is, it, is it okay for a pastor to re-gift stuff? Meaning to give it to somebody else that somebody gave to him? Think on it a minute because you don't want to get yourself in too much trouble. Think on it a minute. Listen, all of us, all of us have too much stuff. We got too much stuff. All of us know it. So why aren't we getting rid of it? I remember... Hey, I'm done. I'm, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. Watch this. Leon, I remember my mom, and, and some of you, mother, mother would know this. Um, there was a thing back in the 60s, maybe 50s, 60s, 
where it was, I guess it could be labeled as the knick-knack era. It looks, everybody's house looked like knick-knack heaven. And I'm thinking to myself, when I get my own house, I am not going to have all those knickknacks because you got to dust them. I ain't got time in my life to dust knickknacks. As a matter of fact, if I can get away with having no shelves that are not in cupboards, I'm going to get rid of them. We got to ask ourselves that question. Why are we got all this stuff? Watch this now. And we are close to retirement age or in it already. Amen. When we should be getting rid of stuff, we still getting more stuff. You know what I need, Leon? I need one more thing. I need one more thing related to stuff. I need a rifle. <laughs> Shoot some people that keep on getting stuff when they don't need to be getting stuff. Come on now. Come on. Come on now. Jesus, watch this. Watch, watch this now. Watch this. I want you to try to find it in the prayer. Chapter 17 of John. I, not tonight. I want you to try to find this in the prayer. Okay. Find, find a verse in the prayer, Latanya, that says that Jesus was asking for stuff. It's not there. It's not there. Yeah, Allison, I could tell you right now, I don't even have to search. It's not there because he's not asking for stuff. We, we ask him for a whole lot of stuff. We want a whole lot of stuff. Jesus knew that a whole lot of stuff would distract him from ministry. So he's praying continually about ministry. Father, we are thankful and grateful to you for your goodness, for your love, for your mercy, for your kindness, for your compassion and grace. We know that we are undeserving people. We know that we need you. We know that we can't do anything without you. We also know that you have an awesome plan that is tied to purpose that you're trying to get us involved with that doesn't pertain to stuff. It pertains to ministry. Now help us to take the baton and run with it so that we would be about our Father's business and that we will honor you in our lives to do what you're calling us to do so that our ministry can be effective and people's lives will be transformed through it. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Mother is waiting for the offering. So I'm, I'm going to ask you to get your offering ready. I want to thank those of you that are joining us via live stream. I pray that you will be blessed and that you'll continue to support the ministry. And we will continue to do so as well here. Boy, this is a nice way to take an offering. You just go to the ushers. That's a great way to be, that's a great way to give an offering. You just go to the ushers. Mother, I think you've instituted something that might work for people in generations to come. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah, now the people are serving the ushers rather than the ushers serving the people. All right, um, I don't know if there are any announcements. Are there any announcements, Shell, coming up? I think I want, I just got it today. Okay. <laughs> That's all right, take your time, take your time. There you go, Alice. Oh, yes. Okay. <laughs> That's all right, I know, I know, I do it myself. This is for the ladies. You are invited to a virtual tea party <laughs> with the Interstate Women's uh, Church. Oh. Holla at a sister. <laughs> Holla at a sister. <laughs> 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 Saturday, June 12th. Yes. Uh, 
um, 2021, mm -hmm. 11 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. Um, I'll make sure you get this in your email. I'll send them out and um, you can get any of the information. But it is a free event, it's a virtual event, but it's women coming together. Good, good. We will also uh, let you know um, about the funeral service for Ali Tucker. Uh, when we get word, again, uh, they have a um, GoFundMe uh, page that they've set up with GoFundMe uh, to raise funds for the funeral itself. Uh, the family is trying to gather funds for that purpose to bury uh, Ali Tucker. And so if you can contribute, you can go to GoFundMe and put the person's name in, the page will come up, and then you'll be able to give a contribution. And uh, let's try to see what we can do maybe to help this family. All right? Okay. Uh, let's, let's bow our heads in prayer. You brothers, be a little quieter at the back while we pray. Uh, Father, we thank you and praise you now and give you glory. We are grateful and thankful to be here again and to be reminded of your goodness, your love, your, your righteousness, and your way. Uh, we thank you for what we know uh, that you're helping us to understand. We bless you and praise you now, trusting that you'll give us a good day tomorrow and a good weekend this weekend uh, as we rejoice in your goodness and are reminded again of how much you love us. Bless us now as we leave this place in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah.